Grace. She's a member of the um, Western Artists Association. Society of, so Society of Western Artists Association. Been a teacher. She's been um, doing demos for different art associations, and she has her own great blog okay. website. And she's going to show us how to do go today. So thank you, Grace. I belong to Fremont Art Association, CWA, Santa Clara Watercolor Society, and uh, ad infinitum. <laughs> so that's kind of a rundown. These are giveaways. They're just some things that are have collected. This was from uh, Santa Clara show they had recently in Morgan Hill, and they used one of my paintings for the uh, advertising. Um, this actually is collage that was published in this new magazine called Insight by North Light. Charlie Chaplin, I, you probably recognize him. This is a self-published, so this is called North to Alaska. Um, also having family in Canada, I tracked back and forth a lot of times through that area and as a child lived just short of Alaska on some islands in the Pacific called the Queen Charlotte Islands. So anyway, you can look through this if you want. They are for sale. Uh, if you're interested, in just an idea of what I do on the road and when I'm traveling. Okay, back to where we're going here. Um, I have samples of my work. In here, there's a couple that aren't out here. This one of Yosemite was actually the first Yupo painting I did. I'll pass this around. Um, and I did it vertically on an easel. <laughs> I didn't know any better. <laughs> so it's Yosemite Falls. Um, and it did. <laughs> it did. It did. And somebody liked it a lot because I don't have it anymore. Um, but just to kind of show you how that works. If I just start doing this, and then I'll just let it run around and mix. And as some of you know that have done any pouring with your watercolors, you get colors that you couldn't create by letting the pigments run together on their own. Um, it's just wonderful things that happen. So as this happens, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I've left some of the textures there. Um, I've reactivated some of the paint. Who knows, maybe it'll be a masterpiece. <laughs> Is it dry slower or quicker than watercolor paper? In California, it's probably slower because it doesn't absorb into the paper at all. Uh, it can take anywhere from a half hour to 24 hours, mm -hmm. depending a lot on the humidity in the air. Um, you know, if you live in um, the Northwest or Florida, you better paint in your studio because uh, it's going to be affected. If you live in Arizona, you're lucky if it's not dry before you want to work on it. So, and this is Viva. I think we should all have stock in Viva. <laughs> the only thing I buy it for is just for art. The painting is a few days old. Can you still remove it? With the paper towel, even if it's been there for a few days or a week, you can just been off. there for months. And you can just lift it and yeah. move the paint around. After yeah, you can put a stencil on it and lift it. Huh. Um, if I want a more subtle background, I can take and you can just huh. roll it and then lift. 
So now you've got yeah. more uh, quieter. Um, you're lifting probably at least 50% of the pain. Yeah, if you want to come up and stand around me, you can. I don't mind at all. So to start with, I've got really three colors here. These are American Journey, uh, Chief Joe's brand. They come in big tubes. It's a lot less expensive than Windsor Newton and the others. Okay, I'm just going to put a little dab will do you. Yeah. This is um, Aurelian Yellow. Doesn't really matter, just use what you like. This is Red Rose Deep. Are you is that a dry really? piece of paper? Dry piece of paper at the moment. Oh, one thing I meant to do, maybe I still should, is wipe the edges with some alcohol. Because I've been handling it and the, there's not much oil in my fingers, but if there is, it leaves, can leave fingerprints. I just want you know, random color here. Now, so it doesn't matter whether it's wet or not. But let's let it, makes it move a little easier. Now I have no preconceived ideas here. This is all just playtime. <laughs> you have to see these spots? That's almost like what you get with fingerprints, that something is resisting a little bit. Um, if you're working on this, Two layers of paint is about as much as you can do and get away with. Um, because after that, it'll start lifting up the underneath layers. But I think if you're careful, you can. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of small bubble wrap on here. On any of these things, try not to let one uh, gimmick, they're gimmicks, one dominate your surface. Um, try to break it up with various things. I've heard some say too many people are using bubble wrap, you know, it's like salt. You always know it's there. But it, it makes a fun surface. Um, here I have some packing material that has various things on it. And the other thing you want to avoid is going parallel to your paper edges, and you don't want them all leaning in the same way. Um, try to arrange them in an interesting design. Everybody knows what that is, probably. <laughs> Starbucks collar. Peach. I don't want that whole thing, so I'm just going to right there. Then I found a bunch of little things in a craft store, I guess, all different stencils of different shapes. What are these? I like these ones that are kind of irregular. 